Hello again, everybody, along with Don Sutton, Skip Carey, back with you at the ballpark. Game two of the doubleheader about to get underway, and here with the lineups, Don Sutton. All right, Skip. Braves win the first one. Pirates lead it off here. Here's their starting lineup. A few changes for Jim Leland and his ball club. Orlando Merced will be at first. He will bat leadoff. Jay Bell in his familiar spot at shortstop and hitting second. Gary Reedus moves to center field and to the third slot in the order. It's Bobby Bonilla cleaning up. And in right field, Barry Bonds, the left fielder, hitting fifth. Mike Lavalier, the catcher, will bat sixth. John Wainer again at third, hitting seventh. Curtis Wilkerson in replace of Jose Lean at second. He'll bat eighth. And John Smiley will do the pitching and bat ninth. For the Braves, their lineup, a few changes. Otis Nixon in right field leading off. Jeff Blauser, the shortstop, moves into the second spot. Terry Pendleton at third will hit third. Again, it's Ron Gann in center field. And again, Ron batting cleanup. Lonnie Smith moves to left field. He'll hit fifth. Brian Hunter starts at first, bat sixth. Frank Cabrera behind the plate will hit seven. Mark Lemke in place of Jeff Treadway at second, and Mark will hit eighth. And on the mound, it's Rick Mailer. The umpires for game two will have Dana DeMuth behind the plate, Greg Bonet at first, Larry Poncino at second, and Mark Hirschbeck will be down at third. Here's the Braves' defensive alignment. Smith, Gannon, Nixon, the outfield. Pendleton, Blauser, Lemke, and Hunter. That's the infield. Cabrera behind the plate, and making his first start for the Braves, Rick Mailer. Okay, Dot, and Merced leads it off. A light rain falling at the ballpark. It started raining just as the first game came to a close. And it's really gotten foggy here. Merced appeared as a pinch hitter in the first game, struck out. The first pitch to him is high. One ball, no strength. And the scoreboard must be sick here. The pitch. There's a strength right through there. One and one is the count. Mailer again into the motion. Merced takes strike two, a change over the outside corner. Rick Mailer could really use a good outing. He's down a little bit. Got it. The big slow curveball. Merced out on strikes. So a good start for Mailer. That is a good start. He showed you all his pitches and put them in good spots. Look how far out in front of that pitch Merced was. Here's Bell, one for four in the first game. He's had good luck against Rick Mailer in his career, four out of nine. He's hitting 287, lost a point in the first game. A little broken bat pop fly on the infield. Lemke has it to us. So Bell is quickly retired. Here's Gary Reedus. And he has murdered Rick Mailer. 10 out of 24 and three of those 10 hits home run. In the first game here, one out of three scored a run, drove two in, had a homer. Reedus about to stand in there. Right through there, nothing can run. Mailer has always been a guy who gives up, whose hits per innings pitch ratio has never been good. But his control has always been excellent, and that is what has dis deserted him this year. But not so far tonight, it's 0 2. Missed the outside corner. <laughs> Bouncing ball, Blouser has it. One, two, three. Nothing doing in the first for the Pirates. We go to the bottom half. Pittsburgh nothing. Atlanta coming to bat. And John Smiley will make his 20th start of the year. He'll pitch for the Pirates. Nixon was one for five in the first game. Scored a run. Stole his 55th base. Has a 17-game hit streak. 
And looks at a fastball outside. One ball, no strikes. More of a mist than a rain here. Downstairs, 2 0. Oh. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom half of the first. First game went to Atlanta 7 5. Marvin Freeman saved it for Tom Glavin. Olson and Hunter homered for the good guys. 3 0 oh, the count to Nixon. Right through there, it's 3 and 1. Smiley 6'4, 195 pounder. Out of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. And he walks out as Nixon. So a good start to the first inning for Atlanta. And Jeff Bowser the better. He took the first game off. He's hitting 263. Seven homers, 39 runs driven in. They play him straight away in the outfield. There he goes. Pitches low and outside. LaValle's throw. Pops away. Nixon locates it now. Let's see if he's all right. I think that either the ball or the guy covering the bag need him in the back. But he's all right. And he steals number 56, two out of three tonight. Ray Solis, he knows the pitchers well. He got a good read on Smiley, a good jump. And LaValle, an absolutely terrible throw and it looked like the ball bounced up and hit Nixon. Look at the jump. First movement. He's gone. Even had time to take a peek. The throw to the right field side and hit him right in the back. Looks like he's okay now though. That's number 56 that he's stolen this year. He's one away from Ralph Myers. Record set with the Boston Braves many years ago. So Blouser a chance for an RBI. Runner at second. Nobody out. Let's see how the Braves play it here. Oh boy, Blouser fouled it off. Bell had broken in behind the runner at second base. He had the whole left side to operate with, took a shot at it, but fouled the pitch away. Well, we saw Bell do this a lot in game one when Nixon was out there, but what Drabeck would do would be wait until Bell had completed whatever moving around he was going to do and got back to his position. That time Smiley pitched with his infield totally out of position. The 1-1 one -one pitch. He bunts a good one toward the second baseman. Wilkerson up, can't make a play. Infield hit. They're on the corner. And the Braves are up and at him again. First and third, nobody up. Isn't it amazing when a club is having a good year how you see guys doing unselfish things, just trying to move the runners along, and often coming away with base hits for themselves? We've seen Pendleton do it. And now we see Blouser do it on what would have been a sacrifice bun. Terry Pendleton, two out of three in the first game, scored two, drove one home. He's now at 341 with 12 homers and 51 runs driven in. The infield is back for the Bucks. They're willing to give up a run for the chance of a double play. First and third, nobody out. A foggy, rainy, rotten night in Atlanta, but the Braves won the first game. Took a shot at right field and just missed a double. A ball and a strike. Two strikes. Same two teams tomorrow night at 7:40. Paul Miller will go against Steve Avery. 
John's got a lot of notes he's going to be passing along as we go along here. Ground ball to the right side. Merced, a good play comes to the plate. He is safe. Laval, you argue. Runners at first and second around in. Demille said he missed it. It's an RBI, a fielder's choice. Pendleton's 52nd of the year. I think this replay is going to show you a couple of things. Number one, Demuth made the right call, and number two, Lavalier blocked the plate without the ball. Look at him slide the foot over there. Takes the swipe with the tag. He's right. He rode him off the plate or to the backside of it, but he never tagged him. Nixon coming on this all the way has to play in front of him. Puts a good slide on Lavalier. But he tried to ride him off the plate. A good slide by Nixon. He caught a piece of the plate. Take a look from this angle. You can see him go off the foot, across the bag, no tag, good call. And runners at first and second. Nobody ought to run in. They might have to delay this game because of the fog. It is really good nasty here. Breaking ball is downstairs. In the first game, Ronnie Gant, 0 for 2 with a run score. He's hitting 261 on the year. Hot shot to third. Oh, it got through it. A run will score. Pendleton race. Now he's going to stop it. 2 0. See how they score it. That's got to be a boot, and it is. Do nothing about it, still nobody else. I bet you Wainer's thinking triple play right here. Look how quickly he gets over, tries to grab it, hit the bag, and he's going to throw to second. He was trying to make the second out before he ever got the first one. Came up on the ball, it stayed down. Braves catch a break. And have a chance to have a huge inning here. Two in, two on, still nobody out. The Pirates came in here having won 13 of 17, but the Braves have been all over them tonight. Lonnie had a good cut miss. Smith hitting 262, five homers, 29 RBI. on deck. <laughs> oh and two the Cantalani. Don Sutton skip carry with you from the ballpark. Now you can see it and that shot really doesn't do the fog justice. It's a little thicker than that shows. Into the dirt. Good play, Lavalier. A ball and two strikes. <laughs> two and two. First wave of the night has broken out here. Down there, half field back up. I notice they don't do the wave in Wrigley Field. No, they don't do the time on field. What do those two have to do with each other? Well, they're both. Just in, they do the time there. Enthusiasm. The 2 2. Strike three call to breaking ball. Lonnie thought it was high. He's called out, one away. Smiley made a bad pitch, got away with it. It's the inside changeup. 
He wanted to throw this down and away, I'll bet you, but the ball backed up on Lonnie, caught the inside part of the plate. He thought it was a breaking ball that was going to stay down and in. So Hunter, the batter, Brian battered once in the first game and socked the two-run homer. His seventh of the year, now has 25 RBI. Pendleton at second, Gant at first with one up. Some people are swinging and missing at Smiley. Nothing in one. Fans are here from Rocky Mountain, North Carolina tonight, from Baxley, Georgia, Kingsport, Tennessee, Shelby, Michigan. Oh, and two. They're here from Raleigh, North Carolina. Boone, North Carolina. Polanski, Virginia. Into the dirt, it pops away, but Lavalia keeps it out in front, and no one is able to advance. A ball and two strikes. Mike LaValle, you're showing us something new in equipment. You're used to seeing either the orange or the blue or the black chest protector in the shin guards. He's gone to something a little bit lighter. I would believe that would be a little bit distracting to the infielders on ground balls, especially if you've got a guy who's a sinker baller. It's coming out of a lighter background. Could be. Time call now. Smiley takes too much money. I see you'll do the tomahawk. You don't get upset. Man. That's encouraging the team to score. The wave is fighting boredom. One two pitch. Pop foul back this way and out of play. Still one and two. But since fans pay hard-earned money to come to the ballpark, there you go. they should be able to do whatever they want to mm -hmm. do, even if it Within. distracts the people, distracts the people around them who want to watch a game. Within reason. A ball and two strikes. And we stretched that boundary when we invented the wave. Winner gets another chance, steps on the back, throws a cross. Got him double play any other. Winner made a good play there, got to the bag, and unloaded just in time to get Hunter. But the Braves scored two times. Bobby Bonilla leads off the second inning for the Pirates. Rick Naylor has a 2 0 lead. Bonilla 0 for 4 in the first game. Still, he's hitting 302 on the year, and Naylor delivers and he fouls it away. It's 0 1. Bonilla lifetime, 6 out of 18 against Naylor, 333 average. He's hit a home run against. Rick six and nine lifetime against Pittsburgh. The 0 1. Foul away again. They're not getting around on his fastball. It's 0 2. And when you never know what's going to happen, but this is really about the first time that Rick Naylor has pitched for the Braves this year when he has been consistently ahead on the count. It's also been the first time that he has been able to count on a schedule and prepare to pitch and to go out and be able to establish some pitches. He's not a guy who has one trick pitch that he can come in and over and over as a reliever. Bonilla tried to stop and got fouled it away. It's still one and two. He's at the stage in his career where he's going to rely on deception, control, changing speeds, and it's awfully difficult as a reliever to come in in the middle of a ball game and to set up the things you want to do. As a starter, you can do it. Ball on two strikes. The Ephus pitch hit fouled on the first base line. It's got to drag you nuts to see that thing coming and not be able to do anything with it. A ball and two strikes. Mailer every now and then features a knuckleball. When he and Lexi were teammates, he picked that up. Just missed inside. 
two balls, two strikes. That's line to left, but it should be playable. Lonnie is there. Almost took off on him. One up. Bonilla is retired. Here's Bonds. Bonds has struggled against me. Four out of 30 in his career. He batted once in the first game and pinch hit a double. With this fog coming in, Skip, it's not, there's not going to be too many routine fly balls. And I'll tell you where it's really going to be tough. If an outfielder have to run, has to run for a ball, take his eye off of it for a second, it's going to be hard to pick it up when he looks back up. This is weird weather for Atlanta. Off-speed breaking ball, nothing in one. This guy has as much talent as anybody, I guess, in baseball. Very fun. Just missed inside. A ball on the strike. Just outside. Two balls on the strike. He does not have a great throwing arm, but he's got everything else. He can hit. He can hit with power. He can run. He's an outstanding defensive outfield. The 2-1. Found the way, it's two and two. And the one thing you mentioned, the throwing arm, that's the reason he's a left fielder and not a center fielder. He has the speed, the instincts, the ability to play center field, but is just a little bit short in the arm. Two balls, two strikes. Upstairs, he's run it full now, three and two. Two nothing Atlanta, our score. We're in the second. Ground ball, Lemke dives, can't make the play. It will go as in all likelihood a hit. He hasn't gotten to it yet. Now Mark corrals it. So an infield hit for Bonds, and he's aboard with one up. Lemke gets to this ball, gets a chance, dives, knocks it down, but it looked like his throwing hand got in front of his glove. Chances are if he's able to catch that in his glove, he can make the play. Mike Lavalier is the batter. Renard first, one out. Laval, you're a 286 hitter on the year. Five out of 23 against Mailer in his career. One of those hits a homer. Double play ball, maybe. Blouser up. Out there. Out there. Nothing doing in the second inning. One hit, no run, no errors. Fast strike right in there, 0 and 1. Smiley delivers. Big slow curve lined in the right field. Bonilla is there, and he handles it one away. Cabrera hit it sharply, but out. Mark Lemke is the batter. Lemke at 223, no homers, 12 runs driven in. Upstairs from Smiley, one ball, no strikes. Good live fastball right through there. The Braves got their two runs with only one hit. On air, a walk, a stolen base, a fielder's choice. All sorts of good stuff. Two balls and a strike. High pop foul down the right side, twisting out of play. center field that's going to fall for a hit bonds over and up with it and Lemke stays at first with a single bringing Rick Naylor to the plate this time we're probably
probably fun. Mailer is a pretty good hitter. I've used the line on him for years. He has deceptive speed. He's slower than he looks. That fits the bill with it. Shows you some pretty good bunning form there, too. Gets the bat out front, but doesn't square around and commit himself. There are a couple of schools of thought. One couple of organizations teach go ahead and square all the way around. Others teach just get the bat out front and lay it down. As he did, the only play will be the first. A 1 4 sacrifice. Perfect bump by Naylor. Now the Braves need a two out hit from Otis Nixon who walked, stole a base and scored his first time and who has a 17 game hitting streak on the line. Second, two down. That's high, one ball, no strikes. Who will you have to harass you when I go to football? You know you'll miss me. The 1 0 pitch. Just missed the inside corner, 2 0. Oh. Jump in here anytime you want. Well, you're doing a pretty good job of sawing your own limb off. Why should I commit? I certainly am, Ollie. <laughs> the stretch. Inside, I guess, 3 0. Oh. Smiley looks in and says, What was wrong with that? Jeff Blauser would be next. Outside, and he walked it. So two are on with two out. Second walk of the night for Smiley. It's been mixing both times. Braves got a couple of gifts early in game one skip and really didn't take advantage and have as big an inning as they could have it came back to haunt them here they're getting some gifts too even with two outs it'd be nice to pick up one of these. Blauser legged out a bunt his first time that's low and away one ball no strikes. Boy, you got two totally different strike zones with these two home plate umpires. Right? Boy, don't you? The first one was definitely a pitcher strike zone, but Dana DeMuth, a little bit more of a hitter's umpire. That's in there on the count evens at one and one. Terry Pendleton would be next, but there are two out in the inning. And Blouser is in the hole, one and two. So much off speed stuff from a guy like Smiley, the change up, the breaking ball that Blouser showed pretty good control there, pretty good back control, not to commit to the fastball. 
Two balls, two strikes. Foul to back, still two and two. from second Nixon from first in the 2-2 two -two pitch. Ah, uh, pop foul back and out of play into the seats. And the fans battle for it down below. Now the fans try to find the cameras and start waving. Steps out smiling, is in no hurry. Into the dirt, full count. Runners will go with a 3 2 pitch. Play Blouser straight away in the outfield. We're watching a couple of pirate pitchers who are, who are having complete turnarounds in their style of pitching. Smiley is a guy who almost always is ahead in the count. He's only walked 24 and right at 120 innings. Drabeck much the same mole, but both early in their ball games are having trouble staying ahead in the count, having trouble finishing off the hitters. The payoff pitch to Blouser will eventually be made here. They walked in there loaded for Pendleton. That's his third walk of the ball game. Pendleton drove in a run with an infield out his first time. The pirate pitching coach comes highly recommended. That's Ray Miller, and he's on his way to the moon. And one of the things that he stressed when he came over to the Pirates, the first soapbox he got on was pitch quickly, throw the ball in the strike zone, it'll make your infielders better, it'll make your outfielders better. Immediately, the Pirate pitching staff, the numbers got better and it turned around. But he has to be very frustrated watching his two aces pitch this way tonight. Leo Mazzoni has done the same thing with the Braves staff for the last couple of years. Love the leagues and walks. Well, what people think, if you watch guys who pitch behind the count, it looks like you don't believe in your stuff. And if that's the case, you really shouldn't be out there. Or up here. Here's Pendleton. Ah, uh, pop fly on the infield. He had a good pitch to hit. Who wants it? Everybody is gathering. It will be Bell who makes the catch. And the inning is over. So the Braves threaten but fail to score and leave three batters. And at the end of two innings, Atlanta leads 2-0. Far East to Europe. Because my producer demands it, I'm going to read the disclaimer. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or the accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And John Weiner will lead off the third inning. Ball well, right through there, nothing in one. Wainer in the first game, 0 for 4. On the year, 375. He's swung a hunt bat since being blown up. Curtis Wilkerson waits on deck. Breaking ball bounces up there. It's 1 and 1. Everybody talks about, or has talked for the last two or three years about Frank Cabrera's weaknesses as a catcher. They are not. Readily visible to me. I don't know about his arm, but 
A little chop toward third on a short hop. Good play, Pendleton. One out. Pendleton had to make a choice here. Should I keep coming and take the short hop or lay back and let the ball play me? He chose the short hop, came up with it, made the nice throw to Hunter, one gone. Wilkerson, the batter, he was 0 for 1 in the first game. I really think that sometimes we get caught up with having people who really are not in the middle of it evaluate catchers. If you want to know what a catcher's like, ask the guy who throws to him. Oh, and one is the count. And he, all Avery did was rave. Rave about him. Said he did a great job of framing the strike zone. He said, I only shook him off maybe once and then wished I hadn't done that. But the pitchers think that he'll do a good job, and that should be the only thing that counts. Yeah, what I think happens sometimes, and it would be true in his case, he doesn't look like a catcher. No, He's he, a big, rangy guy. And he, the pitch. Little trap over the pitcher's head. Tough play for Lemke. Can he make it? Yes. Two down. Fine play for the second out of the inning. There are two things Mark Lemke does really well. Turn the double play, come in, get rid of the ball on the, sh the short choppers. Little uh, acrobatics there as he unloaded that throw. John Smiley, the batter, hitting 150 on the year. I mean, you see Cabrera in the catcher's grab when he stands up. Funny looking guy. You don't see many catchers that big and ranger. Carlton Fisk, sort of like that, in his younger days. And the uh, the Alomar brother, who was catching with Cleveland, yes. is cut out of that mold. 0 oh, and 2 is the count. I think what a lot of people think is that a guy that big will have trouble folding himself into a small target and then unfolding the throw. But if you're athletic and you have to have the agility to do it, it really doesn't matter how big or how tall you are. Curve strike three. See you later. Ending over. Strikeout number two for Mailer. No hits, no runs, no errors, none left. He's faced the minimum, though he's given a hit to go to the bottom of the third. And that'll leave it to nothing. All from the assembled throng by Brave Security. And Ronnie Gant leads off the bottom half of the third inning. Fastball inside, one ball, no strengths. Well, we're starting to get people all over the South, and I'm sure in the Braves' winning days, and now that it's going on again, a group of fans here from Purvis, Mississippi, Poplarville, Mississippi, Cottonwood First Baptist Church with a big group over in Alabama. Foul back, it's one and one. The Beta Sigma Phi sorority from Thomaston, Georgia. Ball of the strike on Gant. Oh. Have you seen that movie with Billy Crystal yet? No, I haven't. Uh, really uh, City funny. Slickers or something like yeah, that? Yeah, you ought to go see that. You'd really enjoy that. Apparently there's some really good lines in it, huh? Yes, there are. One and two is the cut. Got him with a curveball. Gant is out on strengths. That's the first one here in the third. They're showing Gant nothing but breaking balls. Drabeck got him on some good ones. That's Smiley's best pitch of the night. Good spot for it. Good change of speeds and a good break on the curveball. Jane and Wendell Watts from Anderson, Alabama are celebrating his 64th birthday and their 40th wedding anniversary here at the ballpark today. Ronnie Smith will strike out victim his first time. Ran up to bunt, took it outside. One ball, no strike. Two nothing Atlanta. Our score: the Braves got their runs in the first. A walk to Nixon, a stolen base, a bunt single by Blouser, put him at first and third. Pendleton drove in a run with a fielder's choice. The throw to the plate was late. Gant reached on an air by Winger. That allowed the second run to score. And there's a base hit for Lonnie. And he's at first with one away. And Brian Hunter, the batter, he wrapped into a double play his first time in this game, but he homered in game one, a two-run shot. 
has 25 home runs and 109 at bats. So you put 25 runs batted in, rather. You project that over a season, you're talking about oh, 125, 130 every line. It may present the Braves with an interesting situation here. You have Sid Bream signed to a multi year contract. You have Brian Hunter coming up. Ryan Klesko, first baseman, may be the best prospect in the Braves organization. So a collection of first basemen there. Some think he's the best prospect in all of baseball, Mr. Klesko. Pete and I were talking about him earlier about how he's just 19 years old and the Braves very wisely have kept him at Greenville. He had a home run again last night. You hear the words can't miss prospect about him, but there is no such thing. Oh, and two, that was a good pitch. A fastball had him all tied up inside. Because great prospects have missed in every organization. You think in our case, remember Brad comments? He had that label and it just never happened for Brett. Throw to first, runner back. Another beach ball has been confiscated. Well, listen, we haven't gotten your views yet on beach balls. What do you think about that? Oh, and two the cup. They fit right in with the wave. The O2. Hit the other way. Wilkerson, good play, goes to second. He is out. Fine play. Hunter reaches, but if that ball gets through, Lonnie's probably standing at third base. Instead, there's a runner at first and one out. A good play for a couple of reasons. One, he had to go a long way to get it. It would have been very easy to take the safe out at first, and after making the pivot, he still gave Jay Bell a good throw. Watch him turn. Watch where he hits Bell, right about the letters. Allow Bell to get out of there like a first baseman because Lonnie Smith is one of those who makes it hazardous for your health around second base. Yeah, he is one of the best and the bit toughest of the business going in down there. Cabrera, the battery, line to right his first time into the dirt. Lavalia makes the play. One ball, no strengths. A new baseball is put into play by home plate umpire Dana DeMuth. Braves won the first game 7 5. The rain has stopped the. Hayes is still hanging around the ballpark, but it's gotten a little worse. The 1 0 pitch, here it is. Foul to the screen, it evens it up at 1 and 1. Paul Miller against Steve Avery tomorrow night. We'll have it for you at 7 35 Eastern. Rick Reed against John Smoltz on Wednesday. Ernie Johnson, Chip Carey will have it for you on Sports South on Wednesday night. Broken bat, a little tap toward second. The throw is to first, and the inning is over. So nothing doing in the third for Atlanta. One hit, no runs, no airs, one left. We've played three in game two, and the Braves lead 2 nothing. When sports scream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports scream? Massaging sports scream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine he smell, no odor. Why sports scream? Because it works. To help relieve her heartburn, regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt, but his antacid is Tums, and Tums has Tums. calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Tums. Next month on TBS, the heat goes on. I tell you, there was a presence in that house. What do you want from us? Get out! Everything you see, you phone in to Art. Don't take unnecessary risks. Get in, do your thing, get out. Hold it right there! You're out of your debt. You're into something that's way over your head. You want to quit, Ethan? That'll be that day. <laughs> fill out. I just love it when guys fill out. There's a new marshal in town. What's happening? 
summer isn't over yet. The movies in August on TBS. The heat goes on. We go to the fourth inning. Ray is on top, 2 0. Rick Mailer has faced the minimum, though he's given up a hit at the top of the order. We'll come to the plate. Orlando Merced will lead it off in the fourth. And with the play by play story, here once again, Don Sutton. All right, Skip. Rick Mailer has sailed along very nicely for the Braves. He has only allowed one base runner. Bond's got a single, but he was wiped out as Lavalier grounded into a double play. And I'm sure Bobby Cox, Leo Mazzoni thinking if we can get five or six out of Rick, what a good outing it'll be. The top of the order in Merced. He was a strikeout victim. Ball one misses low. Mailer a fastball, four or five different curveballs, a changeup and a changeup on a changeup. That's low. It's two and zero. Oh. Bell and Reedus do up next. On the ground, right field, base hit. A leadoff single for Merced. That'll bring up Jay Bell representing the tying run. Only the second hit of the night for the Pirates. The Braves have three. Braves have squandered a couple of scoring opportunities. They've had base runners in every inning, but have only been able to put two on the board. Bell came into the night. At 288, he has now dropped to 286. Merced, a good base runner, has the lead. Bell is taking strike one. Jay Stewart Bell out of Northwest Florida. State High School graduate back in 1984. His team won the 4A state championship that year. Toward right center field, but Gant was stationed over there. A couple of steps in, he's got it. One gone. And Reedus is the batter. Reedus came into the night at 265. He was one for three in the first game, a solo homer. He has grounded to short his only time up here in game two. In case you missed it, the Braves won the first one, seven to five. Got on board early. The Pirates battled back, took the lead. The Braves came from behind to win it. Not vintage Tom Glavin, but he did pick up his 14th win. Reedus comes up empty strike one. 14 wins for Glavin puts him atop the list in the National League. Merced the base runner a leadoff single here in the fourth inning. That's low one and one. Pirates, the best record in baseball, 60 and 36. Top their division. That's one of those automatic throws to first that Mailer was going to make regardless of where Merced was because Merced was standing on the bag. That's low, it's two and one. You see a lot of clubs go through streaks. Maybe they win a bunch and lose a bunch, but look how consistent the Pirates have been. April and May, 30 wins. June and July, 30 more wins. You figure 15 wins a month, that's 90 wins. That'll put you near the top. The throw to first again, and Merced only a step off. Merced. The hit and run was on. He fouled it away. It'll be two and two on Reedus. Merced had a good jump on Rick Mailer.
If you're thinking straight steel, not likely. Merced has only attempted five. He's been successful in three. Mailer has been no mystery to Gary Rios. A home run every seven at bats. Under the chin, that'll make it full at three and two. And let's see if Jim Leland turns Merced loose on this one. Dean Lamont, his third base coach, flashing signs over to Rivas and to Merced. Merced is going. Fastball is high. That'll put him at first and second for Bobby Bonilla. Lead off single to Merced. Bell fly routinely to center. But Rudis has walked on a 3-2 pitch, and here's Bobby Bonilla. Bonilla came in at 305, was 0 for 4 in game one, didn't have too many good swings against Tom Glavin. He flied to left his first time up against Mailer. Side with the fastball, it's 1 0. Bonilla, 13 homers, 64 RBIs. Just outside, 2 0. Not exactly what you want to do if you're facing the Pirates. That is put runners in scoring position with Bonilla and Bonds coming up. That's fouled away. It's two and one. Bonilla 363. If he happens to hit, we'll show you Bonds even better. Against Mailer career, Bonilla six for 19 with a homer and three RBIs. up empty it's two and two two balls two strikes one out Mailer looking for the ground ball the Ethos pitch is high it's three and two couple of good base runners out there so Jim Leland might start him up but he has only struck out 38 times fly ball deep center I don't know if the park's going to hold this one Gant makes the catch Gant comes out of there with that one what a great catch but he's hurt Like it was going to be off the wall or out of there, but Gant tracked it back. Bonilla is gone on the play. Merced moves to third. He came out of there limping quite badly. May have banged his knee up against the wall. Let's look at it again. What a catch he made. And this is a guy who early in the year had a lot of trouble going back on a ball. Look at him leap. From another angle. He really took some punishment there. It looked like Mike Tyson gave him a shot. Skip both of it. Looks like both of his knees hit the wall. The left one hit it a quicker than the right right one, but it looked like the left knee bore the brunt of the force as he slammed into the wall. Here's yet another look at it. Jeff Porter, one of the Braves trainers, is out there to come to Gant. The elbow hits, both knees hit. The shoulder is sort of wrenched out of the socket. But before he worried about the pain, he got the ball back in. And if he doesn't do that, 
Orlando Merced just keeps running and scores a run, tagging at second base. He rounded third, in fact. And it is the left knee that is hurting Ronnie Gant. He's going to try to run it off. What scares you about this is even if he's okay today, you worry about tomorrow. He's going to stay in there. What a great play. It saved at least one. It may have saved more than one. If that ball gets by him, there's a chance Reedus with good speed would have scored two, and the Pirates would have had Bonilla at second base. A big play for Ron Gant. Two gone. And Mailer still has to face Barry Bonds. Bonds with one of the two pirate hits, a one out single back in the second. Two ninety three is not bad, but five hundred is unbelievable. That looks like a misprint. Well, he has a runner at first and one at third with two outs as he hits. Another chance for Gant, but this one short of the wall. Mailer gets in a little bit of a jam, but he gets the two best, Bonilla and Bonds. The Pirates don't score. They leave two stranded. We have played three and a half in Atlanta. Braves lead it 2 nothing. a level of service with which you're already quite familiar. Only now you can enjoy it at 35,000 feet. Delta's person-to-person -person service to over 270 cities worldwide. At Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. Why are beers that go down lightly watered down so heavily? Why? Ask. Why? Turn off the water and turn but dry. Its smooth draft taste is dry brewed, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. So why get soaked when you can drink but dry? In the life of baseball legend Jackie Robinson, there is one story they never told. Charges include disturbing a peace. You go drive the bus and I'll sit where I please. Insubordination. Call me nigger again, and I'll break you in two. You defend your position. You are your own best defense, Jack. And if I lose, you're finished. A TNT original production. Go get him, Jackie Robinson. The Court Martial of Jackie Robinson. Wednesday on TNT. This was the end of last inning when Gant came off, and if you see one person there you might not expect to have seen in the picture, it was Rick Mailer. Stood there and waited till his center fielder came all the way in. That's a nice touch, and I'll tell you what, if you stand out in the middle of that diamond and get plays like that, you want to stay out there and thank the guy. Nice play by Gant. Lemke will lead it off. And has a 2 0 count on him. People may wonder why you see so much of Jeff Porter this year running out to the field. Dave Persley, the Braves' senior trainer, had knee surgery early on. Three and out of Lemke, and Dave doesn't can't move as quickly as Jeff can. That's the reason. But Dave's still hard at work back in the clubhouse and the trainers room for the most part. That's through the heart. Three and one to Lemke. Mark a single his first time up. The chopper to Wainer. The Merced. That'll take care of Lemke. Keith Mitchell is throwing down in the Braves bullpen. We don't know if that's a precautionary move or if that might do it for Gant tonight. He banged into the wall hard. Looked like both elbows and both knees at the same time hit it. And his left knee appeared to be the one that bore the brunt. Oh, what a play. 
As Baylor, he has a sacrifice to show for his night's work at the plate. Fouls it away, strike one. Gant still testing it in the dugout. Went around, it's 0 and 2. That's fouled away, still 0 and 2. off this one it's a ball and two strikes to Rick Mailer two out of 12 this year got him with the changeup that's strikeout number three for Smiley two outs in the fourth and we'll go to the top of the order and Otis Nixon Nixon with a pair of walks 17 game hitting streak on the line. This is one of the few times during this hitting streak I can remember Nixon not getting a hit either the first or the second time up. Tries to bunt, misses it, strike one. Otis led off the game with a walk. Blauser followed with a single. Braves eventually scored them both. All the scoring for the night, 2 0 Braves. Takes this one outside, 1 and 1. Pushes it to. Wilkerson, can he make the play? Yes, he did. That's a good bunt by Nixon. That's a good play by Wilkerson. He was cheating in a couple of steps, had to unload it underhand in a hurry. We'll take another look at it as we go out. That's the third out. That'll take care of the Braves in the fourth. They go one, two, three. We've completed four. Braves lead it two nothing. from Kodak. It is for the advanced photographer. It delivers the highest resolution. Microfine grain. Superior image structure. It is called Ektar. Sound like the most impressive color print film ever made? It is. Ektar film by Kodak. The genius is in the details. This summer, you can win one of 50,000 prizes worth over $1 million by finding one man. I'm back, and this time, I brought friends. Oh, Haven't I seen you somewhere before? You know, you look very familiar. Nice suits, yeah. Find a Budman certificate inside packages of Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry Draft to win. Nothing beats a Bud Man! Oh, no. My hair's not only going gray, now it's getting thinner. I wish they made something for gray thinning hair. They have Grecian Plus. Grecian Plus is a fresh-smelling foam that gradually brings back natural-looking color, the famous Grecian way. But this Grecian has a big plus. It builds body for healthier, fuller-looking hair. Your hair looks great. Feels thicker, too. Grecian Plus, the total treatment for gray thinning hair. Atlanta Braves Baseball, brought to you by Ektar Film from Kodak. For advanced photographers, the genius is in the details. Lavalier will lead off the fifth for the Pirates. Fouls away the first one, strike one. Lavalier, Wainer, and Wilkerson first three do up. He was a big man for Rick Mader back in the second inning. Bonilla flied out to start it. Bond single. Then he got Lavalier to hit into a double play. 
Inside a ball and a strike. Pirates have grounded into 69 double plays. When you look at the numbers, that's not that surprising. The surprising thing is with the team of Bell and Lean out there, they have only turned 49 double plays. Strike two, two balls and two strikes. Well, Bowyer, part of that package from St. Louis that sent Tony Pena over to catch, brought Andy Van Slyck along with him. That's high, it's three and two. This is a big, in big inning for Rick Mailer. It would give him a chance to get a win. It would also, getting through this inning, would allow Bobby Cox not to have to get so deep into his bullpen. That's the left field, but Lonnie is right there. One gone. <laughs> Mailer's last five outs have all come from strikeouts or fly balls. Got Wainer on a ground out back in the third. Pendleton making the nice play on the short hop. He'll get another shot, but not this time. Inside the line, it'll be extra bases for Wainer. Lonnie Smith grabs it in the corner. It's a stand up double for the Pirate third baseman. Terry had him played off the bag and he hit it right over the bag. Nothing Pendleton could do and said hope it would hit the bag and deflect to it. It, it. Neither of those things. The one out double puts Wayner at second. It'll bring up Curtis Wilkerson. He grounded to second his first time up. Started the night at 202. He was 0 for 1 in game one. Now just below the Mendoza line. That's foul away. Strike one. Mario Mendoza wound up being a hitting instructor. He might be a pretty good one. I mean, just because you weren't a successful hitter. I was just looking at that article in uh, Baseball America. Incidentally, that's a good publication. It's interesting how that started. To left field, that's going to be trouble. It's going to be a fair ball. It's going to be extra bases. Wainer will score. Wilkerson will stroll in the second. Back to back doubles have gotten the Pirates on the board. The tying run is at second. And it'll send John Smiley to the plate. A looping line drive, but hitting a perfect spot. Rick didn't get the ball down as much as he wanted to, and it's just inside the line. The fourth hit of the night for the Pirates. And John Smiley will be the batter. Comes up empty on his first swing. 0 and 1. That all started with the Mendoza line back when he was playing with Seattle. He hit 198 above 200 one day, below 200 the next. I guess Bruce Bakhti and Tom Pashore started all that, but George Brett made it famous. That's a liner. One hop to Blouser. A tying run will score. Smiley will go to second, score the air to Blouser. And we have ourselves a tie ball game. I guess that ball slipped on him, but this is just unbelievably bad for him. Look at it. That's almost like a knuckleball. Hunter did everything. Look how far off the bag he came. Blouser hasn't made many, but there is a boot for sure. You see a lot of infielders pound the glove with the ball. It looked like when he pounded the glove that time, it caught it out on the end of his finger. Petrie throws down in the Braves bullpen, and Merced will hit with Smiley at second. Merced will strike out a single. And Leo Mazzoni is going to quickly take a little trip to the mound. And probably try to buy some time here. Boy, you called it early. I don't know if we were on the air or we were talking between innings, but you said, well, the Braves left four on in the first two. Those look bigger now, don't they? 
getting a chance to score early and not doing it against one of the best pitchers is very important when you're running one of your first two or three starters out there. But when you're pressing a guy into service, he needs all the help he can get to get through those early innings. The Braves are stranded four in the first two innings. Now Mailer pitching in a tie ball game. That's one and one to Merced. Skip Carey, Don Sutton with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Game two of the doubleheader. Braves won the first one seven to five. The end of this half inning, Pete Van Wuren will join you for the rest of the way. Off speed outside, it's two and one. Two balls and two strikes to Merced. Hart signed him back in 85. Sent him to Braden, and he struggled his first couple of years in pro ball. It was only about his fourth year that he really started to hit. On the ground, Hunter will boot it, field it, flip to Mailer. They'll get Merced. Smiley moves to third. Braves lucky to get an out here. It was a curveball. He got the ground ball on him. Hunter played it off his chest and panicked a little bit. Shoveled the ball, but got it there in time. And the Braves lucky a pitcher was running, or the runner from second might have come around and tried to score. Still needs one more out. He'll try to get out Jay Bell. Bell came into the night on a tear. He had hit in 12, he had 12 hits his last 16 at bats. He is 0 for 2 in this one. Nice stop by Cabrera, keeping it in front of him. No advance by Smiley. Bell won for four in game one. Well, the Pirates run a half a dozen guys out there with numbers in the threes with runners in scoring position. That'll scatter them in the pirate dugout. One and one. It's almost like they were expecting that. Bonilla and, and Lavalier are sitting there with their gloves on. Either that or it's not much of a vote of confidence in Bell. That high, it's two and one. They're thinking they're already preparing to go play defense. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's made himself a pretty good hitter. On the corner, two and two. He gives a lot of credit to Jim Leland for that. Because every place else he ever played, they said, okay, play defense. The hitting will take care of itself. But I guess Jim Leland right away has. And the term he uses is he always puts me in position where it's easier to succeed than it is to fail. The 2 2. He's going to fail on this one. The big Epus curveball will take care of Bell. Pirates come up with two. They get back to back doubles from Wayner and Wilkerson. The Blouser air lets the tying run score. We played four and a half in Atlanta. We have ourselves a tie ball game. In these parts, you just never know who you'll run into. I'm Howard Hughes. Well, you know, listen, I believe anybody can call themselves whatever they want. Melvin Dumar would probably call himself a good-hearted guy who's just down on his luck. Well, Melvin, your luck's about to change. Jason Robards, Paul Lamette, and Mary Steenburgen in her Academy Award-winning role. From the director of Silence of the Lambs, it's Melvin and Howard. Thursday night at 8.05 Eastern on TBS. Next month on TBS, the heat goes on. I tell you there was a present in that house. What do you want from us? Get out! 
Everything you see, you phone in to Art. Don't take unnecessary risks. Get in, do your thing, get out. Hold it right there! You're out of your depth. You're into something that's way over your head. You want to quit, Ethan? That'll be that day. I just love it when guys fill out. There's a new marshal in town. What's happening? Summer isn't over yet. The movies in August on TBS. The heat goes on. Tom Glavin got the win in that first game. Marvin Freeman picked up his first save as a Brave. And in this one, we're knotted at two as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jeff Blouser will lead it off for Atlanta. Back again from radio after another long hike. Here's Pete Van Weer. Only takes seven seconds to get over from radio, Skip. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. It'll be Jeff Blouser, Terry Pendleton, and Ronnie Gant do up against John Smiley. Blouser one for one. He is single. He is walked. He'd now like to make up for that throwing error, which enabled Pittsburgh to get right back in this one. Smiley settling down after a rocky couple of innings to start this ball game. Balls behind a ball and no strikes on Blouser in the bottom of the fifth. He looked like he was headed for the same kind of game that Doug Graybeck had those first two innings. He could not find the strike zone. One ball, one strike now to Jeff Blouser. Down the Braves Greenville Farm Club tonight. They're leading Knoxville three to nothing. Behind Turk Wendell. We've got to tell you a couple of the Turk Wendell stories that we've heard. One of them got some national play. We talked about that last week when Skip mentioned it. That's the one about the licorice. He wants yeah. to look mean. He chews big gobs of licorice because he doesn't like chewing tobacco. But he's also concerned about his teeth, so he brushes his teeth between every inning. Right. That's, that's just for starters on Turk Wendell. There is more, folks. Move over when he gets here. There's a strike two and two. Superstitions. He does not want to step on the foul line, so to make sure he doesn't, he jumps about three and a half feet in the air over the foul line on his way to the mound and on his way back to the dugout. So. Full count three and two. He thinks it's bad luck when a ball is fouled off by a hitter out of play to catch a ball directly from an umpire. So if the umpire behind the plate throws the ball out to him, he will just get out of the way, make one of his infielders pick the ball up. Or else have the umpire hand the ball to the catcher. That's another Turk Wendell superstition. And there's more. Down to first goes Blouser with a leadoff walk. He thinks it's bad luck for the pitcher and the catcher both to be standing at the same time. So in this situation where Mike Lavalier is standing to get a new baseball from Dana DeMuth, Turk Wendell will squat out on the mound. And you know what? It works for him. He is the biggest winner on the Braves double leg farm club at Greenville but he is going to be some kind of character to watch when he gets to the major leagues. Fourth walk issued by Smiley. Here's Terry Pendleton. Pendleton 0 for 2. He did get an RBI when he reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning. Had a good cut fouled it back. I wonder what happens when a catcher walks out to the mound to talk to him. Must get very interesting. Must have to yell. Stay back. But we were reading an article about Turk just a couple days ago. And after all the publicity the Lickers pit got, and I think it was Sports Illustrated had that. I wasn't aware of all the others. Smiley goes over to first. Blouser returns safely. Swinging away again, files it back on two. Same 
the two clubs tomorrow night. Game three of the series will have Steve Avery facing Paul Miller, who will be called up from Triple A to pitch for the Pirates in that one. Bob Walk, who normally would start in that spot, on the disabled list now for the Pirates. Injured a leg, running the bases. Here's the 0 2, a little bouncing ball to third. This could be two. Wayner to second one. Wilkerson trying to turn it. First baseman Merced pulled off the bag, though. Not a real good throw that time. Browser went in hard down at second to help. And Pendleton reaching on the 5 4 force. Watch Blouser coming in. He lets Wilkerson know he's there, and a bad throw is the result. So Pendleton aboard now with one down for Ronnie Gadd, who gets another big hand for the outstanding catch he made earlier in this ballgame. There was some question when he walked in from center field whether he'd be able to stay in the game after banging his knee, but he's in there and he's looking for a hit. 0 for 2 in this one. He's reached on an error, struck out. He was 0 for 2 in the first game. We are tied at two in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing in one. He had a good cut of a smiley fastball. There's your runner at first, Terry Pendleton. Count now. Now the one one on the way, the breaking ball line into left field for a base hit. Lonnie Gant. That's all he has to do to be able to handle that off-speed breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. If he just waits on the ball, his hand's quick enough to still drive it to left field. And that's exactly what he did. Did it all with his upper torso. So the Braves setting the table, first and second. This will get Ray Miller out again. No activity at the moment in the Pirate bullpen, but that could change shortly. Lonnie Smith will be the batter. He has struck out in a single. This is Leland coming out, not Miller. You see a lot of visits to the mound by either pitching coaches or managers when Lonnie Smith is the hitter. And I think one reason is there is really no book on how to pitch to Lonnie Smith. He is a very unusual hitter in the major leagues. And even the results of pitches that you throw don't always turn out the way you think they're going to. You might throw a pitch inside to Lonnie Smith and hit it the opposite way to right field. You might throw a pitch down and away, he'll pull the ball. Or he could go the opposite way with it, too. And he really has no weakness. He's a good fastball hitter, always has been, but he also hits breaking stuff and off speed stuff quite well. How to play right side, 0 1. Each team with two runs, each team with four hits, each team has made one error. We're in the last of the fifth of game two. Braves took the opener. Seven to five. Out of play right side again, 0-2. Continues to go the other way. He's hit three of them over in that spot. Still nothing in two on Lonnie Smith. Brian Hunter waits on deck.
Here's the 0-2 again to Lonnie. This one fouled away to the right. So Lonnie Smith has had four swings at John Smiley, and he's fouled four of them off. And it remains nothing in two. One man out. There are your runners. Gant at first, Pendleton down at second. And again, the 0-2 on the way. That miss downstairs. A ball and two strikes to Lonnie Smith. Lonnie currently at 264. play ground ball to second Wilkerson Bell Merced pulled off the bag by Bell's throw as Ronnie Gant went in hard so some good aggressive base running by the Braves in this inning has twice prevented double plays from being turned they keep keeping the inning alive and you know how Gant's hurting anyway he really showed you something there it would have been easy to just detour out of the baseline and save that banged up knee but he Played it hard, and let's see if those extra at bats will pay off on a run. Hunter hit into a 5 3 double play in the first inning, into a 4 6 force play in the third, and a home run in game one. And Smiley out in front of one. The Braves know that Deion Sanders is leaving Thursday. They know that. Maybe by the end of this week they'll get a verdict on how long the suspension of Otis Nixon will be and if indeed Ronnie Gant's one game suspension will be upheld. They hope to get Sid Bream at least back by the latter part of the week and hopefully David Justice too but Justice more of a day to day situation now than Bream. And when all these things happen the value of a Brian Hunter is that if Sid Bream can come back and play first base Hunter can play another position. A lot of young players with his amount of experience only have one position they can play. But Brian has spent about the last two years in the minor leagues playing exclusively in the outfield. And he might be needed out there later on this week when San Diego comes in. The 1 1. Oh, he had a pitch to hit there. That was right in his zone. It's 1 and 2. Thirty two thousand two hundred ninety two paid here tonight. Another fine crowd hoping to see the Braves sweep this twin bill to kick off the 14 game homestand. The one two pitch. Two and two. from first and third 2 2 is popped up back toward the screen LaValier coming back and he will not have a play a lot of ballparks that can still be in play but not here in Atlanta so Hunter will get an extra swing with a count remaining two balls two strikes Letters asking what that little square on the back of the mound is. We just saw it used by Smiley to clean some of the dirt out from his cleats. Down the third base line, hits the bag, fair ball. Rainer Fields throws no. Plays lead. Perry Pendleton scores as Brian Hunter drives in yet another run. His 26th RBI of the year.
Hunter gets the RBI, but don't forget Gant and Blauser going in aggressively at second base, breaking up double plays, keeping the inning alive to allow this to happen. And really a break for the Pirates. If that ball's in the corner, maybe Lonnie Smith comes around and score. So Atlanta takes a 3-2 lead. Runners first and second with two outs. And here's Cabrera, who is flying to right and grounded out to second. Toward third again. Rainer will field and run to the bag to retire the side. But the Braves on the infield hit by Brian Hunter have reclaimed the lead here. We've completed five in Atlanta in game two, and it's now 3-2 Braves. There's a difference when you're flying. Where are we going today? I'm going to Grandma's house. There's someone who shows how much Let's they care. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. A smile, a tone of voice, and the willingness to try. When you love to fly, it shows. Delta Green. Love to fly. And the feeling grows. That's my new friend. Love to fly. And it shows. A lot of women find my looks intimidating. Do you? My mother makes the best brisket. There I was. There I was. There I was in the Congo. Why is a good man so hard to find? Just a minute, okay? Why ask why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brew, not watered down. To drink light, yet satisfy completely. So while men aren't perfect, you finished up? At least refreshment is. Tonight on Sports Tonight, we've got golf. The U.S. Senior Open is all wrapped up in Michigan, and yes, they did have to work overtime. We'll tell you how it all came out. Also, baseball, including the big doubleheader in Atlanta between the Braves and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Join us at 11. When sports scream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports scream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine-y smell, no odor. Why sports scream? Because it works. Braves have the lead back by a run. 3-2 or moving to the sixth inning. They've got the three, four, and five spots due up for Pittsburgh against Rick Mailer. Gary Reedus, Bobby Bonilla, Barry Barnes. Mike Stanton begins to loosen up now in the Atlanta bullpen. And Mailer, who has given the Braves five pretty good innings here, trying to get through one more. Reedus will start it off. Andy Van Slyke limited to pinch hit duties tonight. He's got a strained muscle lower back. So Reedus, who played first base in game one, out in center field in game two. Strike nothing and one. Mailer has really gone to the fastball to start off hitters a lot more tonight than I think the Pirate hitters were expecting. Been very aggressive. Strike two call. 0 and 2. Almost everybody in this Pirate lineup has faced Rick Mailer quite a bit. And we've seen a lot of fastballs taken for strikes. They're up there looking for something off speed or looking for that breaking ball. And he's varied his routine on hitters, too. Shows him the curve there, one and two. He hit the spot, and the result, a ground ball to second. Rivera wanted a fastball outside, and that's right where Miller put it. Reedus retired one down. Now Bobby Bonilla, who is 0 for 2 in this one, robbed of an extra base hit by Ronnie Gann in the fourth inning. He was 0 for 4 in the first game. You don't very often keep him hitless in a doubleheader. Look out, Jim Leland. That ball hit the 
facade right in front of where Leland was standing. Karen back out onto the field, 0 1. Another ground ball to the right side. Hunter handles this one, takes it himself. And Bobby Bonilla still hitless. He's 0 for 7. And 0 for 3 against Mailer. Two outs in the sixth. And Barry Bonds will be the batter. He is singled and fly to center. to Atlanta we're in the top half of the sixth inning. Mailer starts him off with a strike inside corner. It's even now one ball one strike. Two and one now to Barry Barnes. He is closing in on the 300 mark now at the 295. Now toward short, Blouser. Long throw. Hunter keeps the bag. One, two, three, go to Pirates in the sixth. We go to the bottom half. Braves still leading it, three to two. Wednesday night. A person is entitled to the best possible legal defense. And so TBS presents the art of defense through the legal genius that is Perry Mason. Two movies that prove beyond a reasonable doubt he is the great defender. That is the truth. A Perry Mason double feature with The Case of the Shooting Star, followed by The Case of the Lost Love. It all begins at 8.05 Eastern Wednesday night on TBS. What does it take to be a mountain man? Let's see. A mountain man must be fearless, sure-footed, willing to answer the call of the wild. But most of all, a mountain man should be thirsty for a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and see if you have what it takes to be a real mountain man. Man. More and more men all over America are discovering a new way to relax. They're called Hager Easies. And they're the kind of pants that feel great for doing just about everything or nothing at all. Because Hager Easies are cotton. So no matter what you're doing, you can feel comfortable just being yourself. Hager, a feel for America. This doubleheader kicks off a two week long homestand. 14 games in all, counting these two. Two more with the Pirates. Then the Padres, Giants, Astros come to town. Get your tickets early for information here in Atlanta 249 6400, 1 800 326 4000 outside the Metro Atlanta area. Well, there's your score as we go to the bottom half of the sixth, and Mark Lemke hits the first pitch just foul down the third base side. Nothing in one. Keith Mitchell has moved out to the on deck circle, so. Rick Mailer will be lifted after giving the Braves just what they wanted. A strong start in game two. Foul away again, nothing in two. If you watch tonight's first game, you saw Marvin Freeman come on to record his first save. It was our thought then that the reason Marvin was being given that chance was number one, he's been throwing exceptionally well lately. Number two, to save Berenger for game two in case he needed to have one of those three inning outings. He went, says first base up Greg Bonet. And Lemke is a strikeout, but we've just been informed otherwise. First a replay of the check swing. Oh, you see that, but really more important is the news on Berenguer. Yes, we just received an announcement between innings of Juan Berenguer running in the outfield before tonight's doubleheader pulled a calf muscle in his right leg. 
and for that reason is probably not available out in the bullpen tonight. So it's up to the rest of the guys to do the job. And Mike Stanton's going to get up now as Keith Mitchell pinch hits for Rick Mailer. Mitchell still seeking that first major league hit. It's always tough on a youngster playing every day in the minor leagues trying to make it to the big leagues and when they finally get there to be employed as a pinch hitter initially that's almost the way everybody has to do it. But it's a tough role. And there you see the numbers he had posted combined at Greenville and Richmond this year. And if the Braves weren't in a pennant fight he probably wouldn't be up here in this room. They really like his bat. See if this one will stay in play. It will not. Drifting off into the seats, first base side. He's a second cousin to Kevin Mitchell of the Giants, and he is really looking forward, as is Kevin, to the upcoming series next week with San Francisco. Kind of a dream come true for the two of them to be playing against one another. To the left side, cut off by Wayner. His throw on the first in time. Tell you what, we have this. Story one of the Pittsburgh papers on John Wainer's defense being a problem. He's made some pretty good plays in the two series against Atlanta. He really has. He has the one boot tonight, but he's looked quite good. He's really worked hard at it. He had something like 50 errors last year. Well, back we go now to the top of the order. Otis Nixon, who has walked twice in this one and grounded out to second, he's trying to extend the third longest hitting streak in the National League this year 17 straight games. Willie McGee had a 19 game streak. Brett Butler a 23 game streak earlier. Here's the 0 1 on the way. Nixon gets the bunt down. It'll be tried again by Wilkerson. This time he couldn't make the connection. And it's an 18 game hitting streak for Otis Nixon. Same play back in the fourth inning Wilkerson did make. This time he couldn't pick it up cleanly. He really is a good bunter. He has worked and worked and worked at this. It takes a great play to get him. He made the great play last time. This time couldn't do it. So Otis Nixon now with an 18 game hitting streak. Hit number six off of Smiley. And Otis is now at first base. With 56 stolen bases the Braves franchise record is 57. Set all the way back in 1913 by a Boston Braves player named Hap Myers. Blauser's got a perfect night going. A single and a couple of walks. As has been the rule lately for Atlanta. We're getting into the latter third of the game. Braves have a lead. Bobby Cox is loosening up Rafael Belliard now down in the bullpen. He'll probably take over at short for Blauser in the seventh. Yard, who started the first game had a triple. One and oh, the count and Jeff Blauser, three two Atlanta, bottom of the sixth. Out of Blouser. This will be out of play. One ball, one strike. Nixon hasn't even 
left his way towards second. Yeah. Again, Smiley throws over. Nixon, but Blauser fouls it back. He'll have to turn around and go back. It's a ball and two strikes now. Really shows you how long the Braves have lacked a base dealer like a notice Nixon in this day and age in the National League when speed is so important. That you have to go all the way back to 1913 to find a guy that stole as many as 57 bases in one season for any Braves team. And so many players nowadays that are stealing 50 plus. Smiley and Otis Nixon caused Blouser to request time again. That's what the team has done. Rams have a chance to double their stolen base output of a year ago. He's going over to first again. Goes Nixon again. The pitch is low. Lavalier's throw is high. Notice Nixon has tied a Braves franchise record. That is 57 stolen bases, a record that has stood in Boston, Milwaukee, and Atlanta since 1913. And the fans get the message on the Matrix now in center. must be for Otis Nixon who has spent his entire major league career until this year as a fourth outfielder in the major leagues or fifth outfielder. Wayley gets the next one. Maybe it might not be that long a wait. No it might not. Two and two on Blouser. It's a 78 year old franchise record that for that's going to fall it's been tied. In the left field playing a shallow left was Bonds he'll make the catch. And that'll do it for Atlanta in the sixth. But an interesting inning nonetheless even though the Braves failed to score because of that man Otis Nixon. who was in the record book along with Hap Myers on that stolen base. We've completed six in game two, still 3 2 Atlanta. This is Lipton Tea Time. This is the taste. This is the cool of a satisfied face. This is refreshment that's one of a kind. This is Lipton Tea Time. So clean. Discover the joys of Royal Caribbean's Caribbean. Three to ten night cruises to the Bahamas, Virgin Islands, Barbados, and more on the grand resorts of the seven seas.
greatest swingers in the game. The PGA Championship. Live beginning August 8th on TBS. We move to the seventh inning. It's 3-2 Atlanta. Braves have made a couple of changes here. Rafael Belliard, as we anticipated, takes over at shortstop. He'll be batting in the number nine spot in the batting order. And the new pitcher batting in Blauser's former spot. The number two spot is Mike Stanton. He was on for the 44th time this year. You can see the numbers on Mike Stanton. And let's give a pat on the back to Rick Mailer. He had not been that effective coming out of the bullpen since the Braves acquired him from Montreal. In fact, he wasn't greeted very warmly when his name was announced in the starting lineup here at the ballpark tonight, but Rick did his job. Six innings, five hits, two runs, only one of them earned. Walked one, struck out three, and has a chance to pick up the win here in game two. Braves' bullpen thinned a little bit with Berenguer unavailable because of the pulled calf muscle. They don't think it's serious. It's just a day-to-day -day thing, but they don't think he should be pitching tonight. So it's up to Stanton and Freeman and Parrott and Merker and that group now to try to preserve this lead for Rick Mailer. Mike Lavalier will lead it off here in the seventh inning. He's hit into a 6-4-3 double play, and he has flied to left. Delivers and Lavalier fouls back the first with 0 and 1. Pirate bullpen activity now as right hander Stan Belinda begins to loosen. A ball and a strike now on Mike Lavalier. It's two and one. A couple of occasions this year, including twice on the last road trip, Mike Staten has had trouble with his control. You remember he walked in that winning run in the one loss in the St. Louis series. Gets that one over though. Lavalier pops it into shallow center. Or Belliard drifting back puts it away. Out number one in the seventh inning, John Wayner will be the batter. And Mike Stanton really blames himself when that happens. He's a pretty good control pitcher most times. But when he has one of those outings where the control eludes him, he says it still happens every once in a while that he just loses concentration out there. Wayner, a double and a ground out to third. This one heading right back this way, but it's going to fall a little short into the seats below us. They count nothing and one. Braves won the first one, seven to five. Lead this one three to two. We're in the top half of inning seven. That just missed one and one. Toward second, where Lemke fires on the Hunter, two down. And now Curtis Wilkerson, who grounded out to second in the third inning, hit the little flare double down the left field line, driving in a run in the fifth inning. Later scored one. Field. Otis Nixon on the run. Whoa, he overran the ball. Wilkerson's going to wind up at second. And Otis Nixon, who has run down just about everything hit his way, misjudged that one and will be charged with an error. Let's see what happens to him here. Wilkerson inside out. The ball hits it sharply. But it looks like an easy play, and he just simply misjudged it. 
He's lucky he got a glove on it at all, or Wilkerson be at third. He winds up at second on the two base error by Nixon, and now Lloyd McClendon will come on to pinch hit for John Smiley. Marvin Freeman up in the Braves bullpen. He saved the first game, joined by Kent Merker. One of the reasons that Freeman was called on to save that first game was because Tom Glavin, if he had trouble with anybody, had trouble with the guy we're going to see hit next, Lloyd McClendon. Who went two for three with a pair of solo homers. Leo Mazzoni, Frank Cabrera, and Mike Stanton have a conversation on how they want to pitch to Lloyd McClendon here. McClendon has a streak going as a pinch hitter. It's a little bit unusual. Some guys who are employed as pinch hitters a lot very rarely get a pinch hit home run. But he has had at least one pinch hit homer in each one of his five years in the major leagues. One ball, no strikes the count on Lloyd McClendon, a runner at second. Representing the potential tying run. Two men out. One ball, one strike on McClendon. And I'm sure both Lloyd and Mike remember that only at bat. He was hit by that pitch. So now they're at first and second. He's not throwing at him. He's trying to make a pitch up and in. And he gets it too far up and too far in. And now at first and second with two outs, Orlando Merced will turn around and hit right handed now against Stanton. He's only been up from the right side of the plate this year 28 times, does have seven hits. Tonight from the other side of the plate, one for three. The ball and no strikes. Slaps this one to right field. Otis Nixon gets a chance to make good and does. The Pirates strand two in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch time in game two. It's the Braves three and the Pirates two. From the Far East to Europe. Across the Caribbean and throughout North America, only one airline covers so much of the world with so much warmth. We love to fly on when sports cream, when arms are sore, when legs ache, when muscles hurt. Why sports cream? Massaging sports cream in brings fast pain relief. No medicine-y smell, no odor. Why sports cream? Because it works. To help relieve her heartburn, her antacid uses aluminum and magnesium. But his is Tums, and Tums has calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Tums. More and more men all over America are discovering a new way to relax. They're called Hager Easies. And they're the kind of pants that feel great for doing just about everything or nothing at all because Hager Easy's are cotton so no matter what you're doing you can feel comfortable just being yourself Hager a feel for America we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning and we have a new pitcher for the Pirates right I understand Belinda 
Replacing John Smiley, who worked six, allowed six hits, three runs. Two of those runs were earned. He walked four, struck out four. The numbers on the side arming right hander Stan Belinda. They have sort of a bullpen by committee with the Pirates. No one big save man. They employ a lot of different people to try to save ball games. Bill Landrum leads their staff with 15 saves. Belinda's got nine. Kipper's got two. Palacios has got two. Patterson's got one. And this is Randy Tomlin throwing out of the Pirates bullpen now. He mentioned in the first game that they have been carrying 11 pitchers all year. They've gone to 10 for this doubleheader. They'll probably get it back up to 11 tomorrow when they call Paul Miller up. So they may employ somebody like a Tomlin for one inning here, or one hitter maybe. Nothing. And one the count on Pendleton. He's 0 for 3 in the second game. He has scored once and he has driven in one. Caught right on top of the mound. He was pointing over toward the right side of the infield. And he heard Wainer's footsteps behind him and cleared out. Now Ronnie Gant, who's one for three at the plate and has made the defensive play of the night. A circus catch just before crashing into the center field wall and a ball hit by Bobby Bonilla. Strikes to Ronnie Gant. Stan Belinda. 24 years old, a native of Pennsylvania, lives in Port Matilda. And the count 2 0 now on Gant. that cap the way a lot of little leaguers do with a big curve in it. Three and nothing. a walk again. He walked twice in the first game. He's at first with one out for Lonnie Smith. Lonnie one for three in the nightcap. Throw down by Lavalier. Ronnie Gant is safe. That's number 18 for Ronnie Gant as he closes in on that second consecutive 30 30 season. He really deked him here the way he went limping down the first base. It was as if he could barely walk, and then he immediately takes off. Went in hard to the bag. Changed his slide at the last moment and almost came off. The count nothing and one on Lonnie Smith. The way Lonnie dives into the plate and the way Belinda delivers from that sidearm angle. You might see a pitch come close to Lonnie every now and then from this guy. That was a breaking ball, strike in the outside corner on two. Trying to post a little insurance here in the bottom half of the seventh. Well, 
Lindo steps off as a shortstop Jay Bell cut in behind Gant at second. Two strikes to Lonnie Smith. They're underway now at Dodger Stadium. The New York Mets and the LA Dodgers, first of the three game series. Who gets to no hit him tonight? It's David Cohn's turn. He's, he's got a shot. Against Tim Belcher. Here's the one two. Two and two to Lonnie Smith. reason the Braves really have a chance in the next couple of weeks to close the gap on the Dodgers is after that three game series the Dodgers go away for three consecutive series while the Braves stay home playing inside the division. That's it for Lonnie Smith. Belinda records his first strikeout. Two down in the seventh and Brian Hunter will step in. Had a pretty good pitch to hit, but he got it in just enough. The line was sort of tied up. It was right in on his hand. Well, in the seventh inning of game one, Brian Hunter came to the plate with a runner on and hit his seventh homer of the year. That made a one run lead, a three run lead. Will history repeat here in game two? Blown away, ball one. It's two and nothing on Hunter. Now the Dodgers go to Cincinnati, Houston, and then San Francisco. That is not an easy trip for them. No. Rams will be playing three teams that are right now in the second division, although the Giants have been playing excellent baseball lately. We get the Padres, the Giants, and Houston before the next road trip begins. That's a strike two and one. The reason I say they're currently in the second division is because of the way Cincinnati's fallen apart. When play began today, Cincinnati only a half game ahead of fourth place San Diego, only a game and a half ahead of fifth place San Francisco. So they have really dropped closer and closer to that second division. And those teams may not be second division teams when the Braves see them. If the Cincinnati slide continues. Here's the 2-1. Caught the outside corner. 2-2 two and two to Brian Hunter. Giants 11-5 and five since the break. Eight in a row. That's the way the standings look currently, counting tonight's first game. Out towards short, Jay Bell, the backhanded grab, the throw to first. And that's it for Hunter and the Braves in the seventh. Belinda gets the job done for the Pirates. We've completed seven in game two. It's a 3 2 Atlanta lead. It's summertime. Time to get out and get to the beach. And time for our grilled chicken sandwich at Wendy's. Here's your grilled chicken sandwich, Dave. Thank you. Made Dave's way with a boneless breast of chicken, lettuce, tomato, and honey mustard all on a toasted bun. It's a great way to enjoy the summer. Hi. Hey, Dave, how about some volleyball? <laughs> cool. Come in for a Wendy's grilled chicken sandwich today. You sure this net's supposed to be this high? Swingers in the game. 
the PGA Championship. Live beginning August 8th on TBS. Check out our Dallas scoreboard in Houston. The Astros leading the Cardinals 6-2. Ken Caminiti has a, has a grand slam home run in that game. They're underway in San Francisco at the end of an inning. It's 2-1 Giants over Montreal. Burkett against Barnes. And as we mentioned, the Mets and Dodgers just getting underway. No score yet. Over in the American League, a little bit more activity. It's an 8-8 ball game. Oakland led that game 8-1 at one point. The Yankees have come back. They're in the bottom of the sixth. California got a 10-2 victory over Cleveland. Finley wins his 14th for the Angels. Chicago 12-4 over Toronto. The White Sox making their move now. Jack McDowell wins his 13th. Texas leading Boston 7-2. They're in the ninth inning. Minnesota 5-3 lead over Detroit. They're in the bottom half of the seventh. Baltimore did not score in the top of the first at Seattle. And for complete scores and highlights, tune in to CNN Sports tonight in about 15 minutes with Nick Charles and Fred Hickman. Deion Sanders takes over in left field and Marvin Freeman, who saved game one, on here again in game two. Eighth inning, 3-2 Atlanta. Here's Skip. Okay, Pete, thanks very much. Jay Bell leads it off. Bell 0 for 3 in this game, 1 for 7 on the night. Freeman in game one went an inning in the third allowed one hit struck out one. <laughs> Bell Ritas and Bonilla do here if anybody gets on Barry Bond and it's just a one run game. Good play by Pendleton. That ball was wickedly hit. One up. Well, if he's not doing it offensively in a ball game, he's doing something to help you win. Terry Pendleton, the Braves MVP candidate at the moment, and not the only one, really. No, Otis Nixon. Otis Nixon certainly has to be considered. David Justice, had he stayed healthy, would have been high in the rankings. And a Cy Young candidate as well, and Tom Glavin. Reed is 0 for 2 with a walk. Fast strike, 0 and 1. Freeman had one save in his life coming into the night. He can wind up with twice that many in one evening if things go well for him here in the last couple of frames. Curve hung. Hate to see that. A ball and a strike. Three, six, and two for the Braves. Two, four, and one for the Pirates. They didn't get that one. One and two. Reedus one out of five on the night with a run scored and two driven home. He hit a leadoff home run in the first game. The one-two pitch pops away from Cabrera all the way to the screen. It's two and two. Same two teams tomorrow again on Wednesday. The 2 2 pitch. Got him with a breaking ball. Reedus is out of there, two down. Everything Marvin Freeman throws is down most of the time. And against right handed hitters, down and away, he is really tough on righties with that sinking fastball and that slider. Bonilla stands in there. He doesn't get it. He's going for the pump. He's 0 for 7 on the night. Nothing and one the count. Fastball hit to short. Belliard in. Good play. One, two, three. Nothing doing in the eighth. No hits, no runs, no airs, nobody left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Braves going for a sweep. They lead game two, 3-2. 
struggled a little bit. It's one of those situations where you just have to play your hunch. Yep. That's right. Belinda to Cabrera. A couple more runs would make the decision much easier for Bobby Cox. If you like the way the guy you've picked as your closer is throwing the ball, he's going to have to get left hand hitters out anyway if he's a right hander or vice versa. High fly ball left field down the line. Bonds on the run into the corner. At the wall, he leaps. That ball is gone. Boy, that helps. It's four to two. And I think that question we just asked about the pitching has an answer now. With a one run lead, you really have to kick yourself to keep yourself from just going with the percentages and bringing Merker in to face the two left hand hitters who will be leading off the inning but Frank Cabrera hits that fastball over the left field wall to give Atlanta a two run lead now I think you do gamble with Freeman against the lefty at least the first one first home run of the year for Cabrera here's Lemke fastball upstairs one ball no strikes now Lemke Billiard and Nixon the batter. There's a high drive to deep center field. That ball's got a chance. Reed is at the wall. That's gone. Mark Lemke hits his first. It's 5 2. What are the odds? You're almost to August of two guys hitting back to back homers who had not homered all year. Lightning often strikes in unexpected places, and it strikes twice here in the eighth inning. Lemke, who showed good power in the minor leagues, showed that if he gets a pitch to his like he can really drive the ball there. Belliard, the batter, swings and misses 0 and 1. 5 2, Atlanta. A couple more of those we can send Don into pitch tonight. Fifth time this year the Braves have hit him back to back. Belliard awaits the 1 1 pitch. He had a triple in the first game. That's upstairs and it's 2 and 1. Lemke's home run went 411 feet. I didn't catch the tail of the tape on Cabrera. Cabrera was 339. His just did clear, but Marks, a major league home run. That's one of the longest runs hit by a Brave this year in this ballpark. Three balls and a strike. Might as well get some more. I think Ronnie Gant, 415, is the longest one hit here this year. That was a happy man, Mark Lemke. Out the way, it's three and two. <laughs> Belinda to the rising back. He got through the seventh in good shape. Ball four, he's a boy. Second walk for Belinda. The sixth walk in this game by Pirate Pitchers. And they walked six in the first game. Jim Leland hasn't given up. You never do. But he is as close to it as you get. There is no activity in the Pirate bullpen. And you've got three straight left-hand hitters coming up. You never know what's going to happen. That's what makes this game fun. But when the Pirates come to town, realistically, you'd be thrilled to death with three out of four, and a split wouldn't break your heart because they're a fine, fine team. Inside the next one, one ball, no strikes. But now, if the Braves can hang on here, you've beaten two of the best pitchers in the league, Smiley and Graybeck, and you've got two fellows coming up from the minor leagues who are marginal. 
pitchers at best or they would have been here all year and you've got Avery and Smoltz going for you so you'll you now begin thinking about sweeping the Pirates. Yeah now three out of four if the Braves hold on and sweep this one would be a disappointment. He bunts back toward the mound runner to second play will be to first out by a step that's a sacrifice. It goes one three here's Dia. Sanders played in the first game. Was 0 for 4. I know he makes a lot of money playing football and I know he enjoys it and I know he's very very good at it but I know he must be in a way very heartbroken to leave this situation. He had a good cut there found it back nothing in one. I think it bothers him a little bit that the one statement that he's been making all year and that is if the Braves are close to the top and I'm contributing around August 1st I might want to stay well that's happening the Braves are close to the top and he's contributing. But he is going to honor his football contract. Downstairs, it's one and one. Well, it would be all right with us if the Braves won a championship with him not in attendance and the Falcons followed. He and I sort of in similar situation. He goes to football, picks up two million. I go to football. Two balls, one strike. Low again. Melinda really struggling now. Three balls and a strike, so Sanders will have a good pitch to hit here. The Tomahawks are flying here at the ballpark. He walked it. That's his third walk in an inning and a third. And Terry Pendleton, the banner. Pendleton two out of three in the first game two runs scored one driven in. He's 0 for 4 in this one with an RBI and a run score. Ronnie Gant moves on deck and the pitcher follows him in the order. One ball, no strikes. In the ninth, the Pirates send Bonds, Lavalier, and Wainer to the plate. Merker now gets up and begins to throw in the Atlanta bullpen. He had a home run cut, but he didn't get it, and it's one and one. Well, a little bit of the reverse side might be starting to work now with a three run lead. Merker has not had an opportunity to close out many games lately. Bobby Cox may be thinking with three runs, I might want to try him in there, see if he can get through that ninth inning. A ball and a strike. Ground ball headed for right field, but Merced up. There's one. Safe there. Merced got a good jump on that ball, moved to his right. And turned it off over there on the corners with two out for Gantt. I'm not so sure that Belinda picked this throw up right away. It looked like he really lunged for the ball at the last instant. Yeah, look at his head duck out of the way there. He almost got beamed by that throw from the shortstop. Tommy Gregg moves on deck if Gantt delivers. Freeman will be done for the night. He did. The other thing that might be in Bobby's thinking, he pitched an inning in the first game. He sat around for two and a half, three hours, pitched an inning in the second game. Might figure that's just enough for his arm. 
First and third, two out. Gant, one out of three. A stolen base in this game. He had one in the first. You've also got to take into consideration the pulled calf muscle to Juan Berenguer. He's listed as day to day. Well, we've had injuries listed as day to day that have gone week to week. And you need more than one guy to close when your ace closer is not available. Breaking ball outside. It's one and one. Two strikes. The one thing that has really impressed me about this team this year is the way they have been able to perform when some of the key people have been unavailable. Braves getting back in the race with Bream and Justice both out. Now tonight on the verge of sweeping a doubleheader from the Pirates with Juan Berenger unavailable. Other guys have stepped up and done it. The one two. Almost hit him inside with an off speed breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes. Well, you've gotten a career year out of Pendleton, a career year out of Nixon, a career year to this point out of Glavin, a career year out of Berenguer, and good solid years by a lot of other guys. Didn't get the curveball, and the inning is over. Gant flips the bat away in disgust, but the Braves score two times. They do it on two hits, and they leave a couple. Ken Merker on to pitch and Barry Bonds leads it off against him. Bonds one for three in this game. A pinch hit double in the first. Save opportunity here for Merker and this is the role he wants. If he's going to be in the bullpen he wants to close. He said if he's not going to be able to be a closer in the bullpen he'd rather start. Oh and one the count to Bond. Nobody on nobody out a three run game. Just missed with a good fastball, one and one. Strike two called inside corner. Bonds didn't think so. Pirates had won four out of five, 13 of 17 coming into this doubleheader. And they had their two aces going. Or I should say, two of their aces. He stayed alive, fought off a breaking ball, and the fans battle for a souvenir. Merker had a lot of these opportunities earlier in the year. He's picked up four saves, only one, though, since the 11th of May. But he was told by Leo Mazzoni and Bobby Cox that his inconsistency is the reason that he was not getting that opportunity. Berenguer has been so consistent. So he has a chance here. Up the middle, base hit. It was a curveball, and Bonds, boy, he is a good hitter. Bonds just stroked it up the middle. Another base runner brings a potential tying run to the plate. Lavalier will stay in there. Lavalier just 0 for 2 in his career against Merkin. Andy Van Slyke is 2 out of 2 with a home run. There's a strike to Lavalier. He hit into a double play in the second inning. Fly to left in the fifth, pop to short in the seventh. Another ground ball would be nice. Runner going a little high, and Bonds makes it unmolested. No stolen bases credited Bonds. That's a catcher's indifference. And it takes the double play away, so maybe not such a good idea to be indifferent in that spot. But Cabrera had no chance. A little pop fly foul. Merker ahead on the count, one and two. Laval, you're out of the batter's box. Now he stands back in. Wayner is the on deck hitter. Oh. 
Got it. Fastball outside corner. Laval, you knew it. Merker gets his first out of striker. Down one and two in the count. Lavalier must have been looking for a breaking ball. As soon as that fastball stayed right on the outside corner, he knew. So there's the first one, and Wainer the batter. And Wilkerson moves on deck. There's a strike, 0 and 1. Strength. Five, six, and two for Atlanta, two, five, and one for Pittsburgh. Downstairs, two balls and a strike. Can't walk when you can, but you don't want to walk a man. A potential tying run would come to the plate. Braves bullpen is vacant, or at least there's no activity. There goes Bonds again. I pop foul out of play. Two balls, two strikes. One on, one out, a three run game. Braves won the first one, 7 5. We'll be with you. It's 7 35 tomorrow night. Fly ball foul. Bonds running again. He didn't get that good a jump that time. Well, they're not paying any attention to him down there. I wonder if he gives any thought. To the fact that Wainer might be distracted by him taking off on every pitch. You need base runners here. Runner at third really doesn't, doesn't do you much good. He scores on a fly ball, but it's still a two run game. In the right field, diving play. Lemke throws to first. Bad throw. He's safe. Tying run to the plate. Great effort all the way around. It'll be a hit. And the tying run comes to the plate. They really got to give this kid Wayner credit. He has really done a great job offensively. He got a pitch up in the strike zone. Lemke, a great effort. But Wayner would have had it beat even if the throw had been on the mark. He keeps the run from scoring by getting the glove on it. Wilkerson stands in. One out of three. Doubled home a run, then scored in the fifth. It's 0 and 1. A long one now ties it up. Wilkerson has no home runs this year. Tom Prince has moved on deck. He bashed one off the left field wall in the first game. Downstairs, a ball and a strike. They're on the corners with one out. Kent Merker trying to put him away. He's ahead in the count, one and two. As a right hand hitter, Wilkerson at 292 coming into the night. A much better hitter from this side than from the other. Base hit left field, hanging curve ball. It's five to three. He's lucky that one didn't leave the yard. That was really up in the zone. Here's Prince. And when you throw a pitch like that, you're fortunate the guy hitting is Wilkerson and not Bonilla. Those are the kind that leave the ballpark when you've got a power hitter up there. And Petrie is beginning to loosen now out in the Atlanta bullpen. So 
So Prince is the batter in the first game. He did the catching, wrapped into a double play, reached on an air, later scored, doubled. So was one for three. Leo Mazzoni has visited with Merker. The Landrum up and throwing in the Pirate Pen. They're within two, and they have those runs on base with only one out. His curveball has not been Merker's friend so far to make. Prince stands in there. Ball outside, one ball, no strikes. Top of the order, and Orlando Merced on deck. And he has home run power, and he's proven that against us this year. So does this young man, Tom Prince. High, lazy fly right field. Nixon is there waiting. There's your second out. So Prince fails. And Merced is the Pirates' last hope. And you've got the situation you want here. You've got him batting right-handed. He does have power, but all of his home runs in the major leagues have been hit from the left side of the plate. Merced tonight is one out of four, a fourth inning single. Wilkerson has good speed, carries the tying run at first. Upstairs, one ball, no strikes. It's even now, one and one. Jay Bell is on deck. Landrum ready if needed in the bullpen. One and two. He's a strike away. Those remaining on their feet here. to a young kid like Merker you've been a starter all your life you know exactly when you're going to pitch and how you're going to be used then you're a closer for a little while now the inactivity has to drive you a little nuts the one two pitch got it oh he foul tipped it oh man I thought he had him struck out and the ball went into and then out of Cabrera's glove Almost, but not quite. And you don't blame the catcher on that. It's That's just a reaction play. It either sticks or it doesn't. You don't have time to think about squeezing your hand. The one-two. Little tap. Belliard fields to first. Braves win a doubleheader. The Braves are within five of the lead and a chance to make it four and a half if the Dodgers lose. Seven five in the first game, five three in the nightcap. Totals, highlights after this.